All right, I guess I'm on here. Um, I'm gonna try to open up another window here so I can see people commenting. I'm gonna be answering a letter today. I'm just gonna let a little bit of time go here so people can click on the video and whatever else. Now this is kind of a weird time to do a live stream, but I figured I would just do uh, something quick here to answer this letter. Um, nope, it wouldn't be there. It'd be over here. Okay. There we go. All right. Yeah, I'll give people some time to come in here. And, um, Hi, Nina. <laughs> it's, a, it's kind of a morning broadcast here, real quickly. Um, morning to let this mind be in you. Um, but I'm going to be talking about here, John chapter 20, verse 22. Um, I can get started, I guess, here because, you know, anybody that comes in late, they can watch from the beginning. But, um, uh, it says, uh, Dear Brian, here's the letter right here. I'm not going to show the email address or the thing or whatever else, but right there it is. The letter. Um, <clears throat> Dear Brian, first off, I just want to thank you for your ministry and for all that you do. I have learned so much since I found your ministry, and I pray for you and your family often, which I very much appreciate. I have a question I hope you will answer for me. I was reading John's gospel the other day and saw a verse I had never seen before. The verse in John 20, verse 22. Um, uh, does this mean that the 12 were given the Holy Ghost before Pentecost? And he says, if it would be easier for you to answer by email, that would be fine. Gives his email address. Thank you again for your teaching in Christ. Uh, in Christ there says his name. Um, so if you have a King James Bible, go to John chapter 20, verse 22. Um, so we'll get into some questions and answers and stuff over there too um, a little bit later um, here at the office you just have to wait um, and expecting to have an appointment sort of sort of so to speak later on so I have to be here for a while so I thought well you know I'll do a live stream quick but John chapter 20 verse 22 it says and when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Um, and yet you go over to Acts chapter 2. Um, actually, we'll go to Acts chapter 1. If I can get these pages to turn. Um, where's it at here? Okay, Acts chapter 1, verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Baptized is the key word there. Um, but you see there, they are breathed upon in John chapter 20, verse 22, and saith unto them, and Jesus saith unto them, there, receive ye the Holy Ghost. But yet over here in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So the easy answer to that is um, they weren't really baptized in the Holy Ghost until Acts chapter 2. Jesus is saying it's going to come here, you know, and it's going to happen. The day of Pentecost it does. Acts chapter 2 records that day of Pentecost when they're baptized in the Holy Ghost. They receive the Holy Ghost in John 20, verse 22, baptized in the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter one, or excuse me, Acts chapter two. Okay, uh, you know, you say, well, how's that work out for us today? Well, it doesn't. Okay, uh, it's not the same thing. Again, this is the importance of being dispensational. If you're non-dispensational, this stuff isn't going to make sense to you. You're going to say, you know, like a lot of the charismatics will do this thing of, of, uh, you know, there's two different baptisms. You get, you get saved, or, or I'll say, not, I shouldn't say two different baptisms. They say. Um, They'll say that you get saved and then the Holy Ghost comes later on. And then you receive the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in unknown tongues. So 
um, and they'll try to reconcile things here in the early part of the book of Acts. It's Acts is a transitional book. And so they'll they'll say, well, see, they receive the Holy Ghost there in John chapter 20, but then they're baptized in the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2, and they start to speak with tongues. Um, so uh, it's not the same thing that we have today. You're not going to see this in the Paul and Epistles. And the other interesting thing is, I should add, that, um, <clears throat> you know, for everybody that's just tuning in, by the way, I'm answering a letter that we got here at the ministry about John chapter 20, verse 22, like the uh, title says there. They received the Holy Ghost in John 20, verse 22. as a special thing there, the disciples. But then they uh, were baptized in the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2. Okay, different thing, different situation. But here's the in other interesting part about it. The Apostle Paul would not have been present in John chapter 20, verse 22. So the Apostle Paul kind of typifies what we are today, you know, in some ways. I mean, he's, his salvation was different than ours in terms of, um, you know, the Lord doesn't knock each of us down and strike us with blindness for a few days. And we have to go someplace and wait for somebody to contact us. Um, so just looking at the comments here. Um, can everybody hear me? I see that Spencer is saying I have no sound right now. Can everybody hear me? Should be able to hear me, I guess. Okay. All right. Just making sure I'm not just talking without any sound. So, um, so yeah, that that would be how I would answer the letter here to the, the brother that what or sent this letter. It's a, it's a good question. Very good question. Um, you know, what's the difference between receiving the Holy Ghost baptized and being baptized in the Holy Ghost? Um, and of course, understand that the baptism of the Holy Ghost there in Acts chapter two, they're speaking in in known tongues. There are no unknown tongues in Acts chapter 2. They're listed. If you want to go there to Acts chapter 2. Um, uh, verse 8, Acts chapter 2, verse 8. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. They're not unknown tongues. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia. Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and the, in the parts of Libya and Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues. So uh, it wasn't an unknown tongues. And when you hit unknown tongues, 1 Corinthians 14, well, 12, 12 through 14, chapters 12 through 14, then you get into the thing of interpretation of tongues. OK, so it's just the same thing as if we would be a group of us meeting today. And somebody walks in and they start speaking some language that we don't understand. Well, I say, is anybody here? Can anybody here interpret that? You know, and somebody says, yeah, I, I know what they're saying here, what they're speaking. And you can interpret what they're saying. That's the, the two different gifts there that are to, there for today. Um, and I do believe in the, in the gift of speaking in tongues today. Um, but it's a, a it's a gift that the Lord will give you to understand different languages. It's not some kind of a made up charismatic blah, 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 thing, hush, lush, untie, untie, bow tie type of deal. Uh, that's that's just heresy. So um, these people train to do that. They make they say, you know, just say a bunch of things and it'll come out. You'll start to just speak gibberish. And then that's the Holy Spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit. Um, so. OK, if you want to we can do some questions now real quick here. Um, Okay, King James Code 37. Hello, Brian. It has been my desire to communicate with you concerning a numerical code or seal that exists in the King James Bible. I've heard of that stuff. Honestly, I've never really looked into it that much. It's there are certain things that other people can get into, and you know, I'm not an expert in everything. And my my uh, there there could be something there. I don't know. I've just never really studied it that much, honestly. Um, Nemo official. Hey, Brian, is oneness in the Godhead the same or no? 
Um, oneness, the oneness thing is, it's more like modalism that Jesus is basically there. There is no father. It's just that he kind of shifts to it's Jesus, the father, Jesus, the son, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. And so it, it kind of depends on who you're talking to. Um, I, I kind of stay away from the whole oneness thing. And just, you know, the Bible says Godhead. I stick with Godhead. Um, Dr. Martin, KJV, question. Although not related, churches together in Bishops, Stratford, UK, are doing random acts of kindness this week called Love Stratford um, or Stortford. Sorry, sorry. How do you respond to that? I feel it's wrong. Yeah, it's just communitarianism. It's 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 just community service, doing good things and whatever else. Um, it's okay to be nice to people and do good things for people, but it's it's a problem um, when that's all you're doing. You're not offending anybody. Um, the gospel's offensive. Um, let's see here. Jack Hammer, is it get, is getting married through the state proper for a Christian or is it fornication? Well, you can't really call it fornication. I mean, it's spiritual fornication, perhaps, but it's there's nothing in Scripture saying that you have to go to the state to get married. Um, I don't agree with that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, marriage coverture, I've explained that in another video. Phone's ringing. Give me a minute. Let's see what he says. Excuse me, telemarketer. Um, I just shut off the ringer there. Um, but yeah, I, I stick with uh, marriage coverture is the, is the right way to do it. I don't believe that the state has any any rights in um, getting into marriage and you're getting married and things like that. My answering machine going off. Ministry thing here. Um, Roger Pinch, Brother Brian, I was wondering in Judges 13.3, is that re re reference to the Lord Jesus? It's so funny. They always, you know, I, I quote some scripture in my answering machine thing there. And as soon as I start talking scripture, they just don't click, <laughs> hang up. <laughs> Judges 13, verse 3. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Yeah, the, the reference is to the angel of the Lord. Um, not an angel of the Lord, but the angel of the Lord, I believe, are always a reference to Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Um, you know, the Lord takes on different shapes and different forms and all throughout the Bible. And, you know, the, even in the New Testament, he shows up as the angel of the Lord. Um, again, you know, understanding the Godhead, body, soul, spirit, you know, it's, you know, three parts or three things in one being and they can change shape and whatever else and and you say what well, but we can't do well yeah because we're not god okay i can't show up as the angel of the lord some other place or something or as an angel some other place there are you know we are created in god's image but we don't have all of his capabilities say it that way um uh Vado, they're asking the question, what do you think about the winged women in Zechariah chapter 5 being seraphim? Um, Zechariah 5, 7, Ezekiel 24. No, they're not seraphim. Seraphims have six wings. Uh, they're not women. They're men. Uh, they're male. Um, so, uh, no, they're not seraphim. Definitely not. Uh, the, and the if you go to Zechariah chapter 5, um, another clue as to what they are there. Which is quite telling, actually. Um, Zechariah chapter 5. Um, yeah, verse um, 5, 5, 5. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes and see what is this that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. Um, and behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. 
And he said, this is wickedness. And he cast it in the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then lifted I up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Um, you know, so my, you know, contention there is it's called wickedness. Um, it's it's evil. What's going on there? It's not that oh the the ephah was evil, but then the two good angelic women came with their winged feathered wings, and they're carrying it away. No, I think that the whole thing is wickedness. And so people saying about they're seeing these beautiful angel women with feathery wings, they're probably seeing some form of a devil or something like that. So that's you, but you can't prove it's a seraphim or a cherubim. You know, not at all. They have multiple wings. They, these have two. So. Um, uh, hi steve ministry of truth um a lot of comments are going there when i'm when i'm looking down reading things here so if i missed your question then ask it again um 1611 absolute truth ministry Brother Brian, I've been looking into the Catholics a lot recently and their heresies, but I found that Islam was always used by the Vatican to kill us Bible believers. Is it true Islam was made by the Vatican? Um, yeah, I believe so. Um, Alberto Rivera came out with some of that stuff talking about how Muhammad was basically one of the, his wives or whatever was a, was a papist. And, and there's, there's different stuff. I haven't done extensive research on the whole thing, but you look into it, the Muslims venerate Mary. The Muslims have a holy city that, you know, very much like Rome, um, you know, Jesus is kind of a subordinate to Mary and everything else. You know, there's a lot of similarities between Islam and Roman Catholicism when you get right down to it. Uh, yeah. I realize a lot of you are probably heading off to work right now. It's <laughs> it's kind of an odd time to do a, a live stream, I realize. But I just wanted to, to answer the question from this brother about John chapter 20, verse 22. Um, yeah, the prophet there, that you're absolutely right. Um, anyone here wants to kill atheists? No. You know, <laughs> people that are foolish kind of take care of themselves. You know, you don't really have to do anything to, to them. The Bible says thine own wickedness shall correct thee. Um, Bible believers don't want to kill people. Okay. Uh, Bible believers believe in free will. Uh, so that's important to understand that. Um, so if you can't understand your tongues, it's false. Uh, well, if it's a if it's an unknown language that nobody knows and whatever else, then yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Um, what is my main Bible? Um, it's a Cambridge wide margin. Um, it has note paper in the back and things. I bought it many many years ago. Um, but local church Bible publishers, I've recommended them. Church Bible publishers, I've never had any, but you know. I was recommending local church Bible publishers before they had that split thing. So uh, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, what's the difference? I, I knew a guy one time years ago that he was trying to say the Holy, the Holy Spirit is actually evil and the Holy Ghost is good or something like this. It, no, it's just it's it's two different, um, you know, basically titles or whatever for the same part of, you know, God there, the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, the Bible, King James Bible uses both. So it doesn't really matter what you use. Um, I'm sure the Lord has a reason for it and whatever else. I just I haven't really looked into that whole thing. Um, Bobby Barrett, my sister-in-law said that Polish catechism is not part of the Roman Catholic Church. She told me to do more research. I told her I personally think they still part of that branch. I need to pray for her. Yeah, there's there's a lot of people that do that. They try to distance themselves from the Roman Catholic Church, even though they're under the umbrella of Catholicism. They try to say, oh, we're not the same. You look into their beliefs, they're the same. You know, maybe a few differences here and there. I know there's the Latin right, and, the, and there's different, uh, you know, different things within Catholicism, but yeah. Okay. Yep. 
question when did the church start and when when did the church start when jesus said to peter thou art peter and on this rock i build my church or pentecost um the church did not start nobody was in christ until after um he died and was buried and rose again from the dead um pentecost is what i would say is when the church actually started and uh, peter was not the rock that jesus built the church on by the way okay because a few verses later he calls him satan so it's important to understand that um brian bailey i had a question i've heard a lot about vaticanus and sinning atticus what is the deal with alexandrinus i don't hear a lot about that one yeah they don't really talk about that i think it's it's codex d or something like this i i forget it's been a long time since i studied the bible version issue um yeah i don't i don't remember a whole lot on that one to be very honest with you but they they really try to stick you know they'll say the two oldest and best manuscripts codice is b and n left so but alexandrinus is some is is part of the same you know type of manuscript should you be weary or wary of uh uh kjv fire bible red letter edition by life publishers yes you know if it's a king james bible that's great but be real careful about the footnotes i i usually stand, try to stay away from bibles with footnotes it's just better that way um okay uh why do catholics praise mary um because they venerate her as a god Basically, they believe she's the mother of God. She's immaculate. She's sinless. Um, so there are prayers, of course, to Mary. Type of thing in here. There's there's prayers of the Holy Trinity in here, too, which is kind of funny. But they believe that Mary is the uh, mediatrix. She's an intercessor between Jesus and, and us, which is totally debunked by Scripture. Um, I think it's uh, first. Let me just look it up here real quickly. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 For there is one God and one mediator between God and men The man Christ Jesus Not Mary So praying to Mary is rather foolish um, uh, West Green Hi Brian how do you reply to people who say Don't put God in a box What is the correct biblical answer um well uh you can know the lord through the bible um you know god reveals himself through his word uh sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth john 17 17 would be a good verse on that um you know uh you know that they, there's a bunch of verses i'm i'm trying to stick with other questions here but john 17 17 would be a good one um, God's word is truth and you get sanctified through this book not through your opinions so um, Somebody if, if somebody's trying to say oh, you, oh, you know about God is from the Bible. Well, yes <laughs> It's safer that way. You know if you just make up things about God. Well, then that's a problem um, Votto says question. Yeah, I've heard about the same thing brother that the Catholic Church was split into both the Greek Orthodox Roman Catholicism how much truth is there to that? Um, well, the Greek Orthodox, I, I don't think that they really came from Catholicism. It was more of a, you know, it's two fighting different factions and whatever else. Um, so, all right, we'll go down through here, try to get caught up. Uh, Do you think the church that the church age is over? No, I don't. We're still here. Um, do I preach? Do you preach repentance and holiness? Uh, yes, I do. Um, oh, where's that one at? Have, have you researched Tarshish in relation to the mark of the beast? Amanda Anderson. 
Uh, no, I haven't. Um, honestly, no, I haven't. Okay. Uh, thoughts on Eric John Phelps. Um, oh boy. Uh, can of worms on that one. Okay, we're all done for today. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, Eric. Uh, I respected his research on the whole Jesuit thing, but I think he is way too promotional of the Jesuits. And he's starting to get into some really weird stuff. I mean, coming out and and just saying Peter Ruckman was a Jesuit. Peter Ruckman had his issues, but Peter Ruckman was not a Jesuit. I mean, give me a break. Um, yeah, I, I just – Eric John Phelps, I, got, I have some major issues with him. I, I kind of regret even doing a live stream with him one time, an interview with him. So, Salvation of Faith. Hi, Brian. First time on this chat. Greets from Belgium. We pray daily for you and your family. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good to see you in the chat here. Um, do, I, do you believe that the Revelation 12 sign had anything to do with the rapture? No. No. That If you're talking about the September 23rd thing that happened years ago or whatever else, no, it was, it was a fake, false prophecy. Um, I did it. There is actually some some interesting things on Revelation chapter 12 and uh, the rapture. Um, you can check out that video. It's on my channel here. Um, okay, 1611 absolute truth ministry. One more question, brother. How do I deal with Baptist heretics who say Jesus isn't the father, even if they're ignoring Isaiah 9, 6? Colossians 2 9, John 8 24 to 27. Uh, you just got to get to a point where you just walk away from them. You just say, Well, if you can't see it, you know, I'm sorry, you're blind. Um, I mean, Isaiah 9 6, you know, it's so plain. You know, he's son and eternal father. You know, oh, oh that's a different father. Uh, okay. <laughs> the father of Israel. That's what uh, Eric Phelps told me that the one time I had it, you know, texted him back and forth a little bit, you know, through uh, Skype. And um, and he said that, uh, well, when it says that he's the everlasting father, that means the everlasting father of Israel. I said, where's that say that in scripture? It doesn't. So. Um, what are the bands and beauty in Zechariah 11, 7? I have no idea. Honestly, a lot of the, the minor prophets are just over my head, to be very honest. Um, do I believe in the Trinity or oneness? Neither. I believe in the Godhead. And I have a lot of studies on that and get into it. Um, a lot of people want to just get into the thing of saying, hey, what about this? What about that? I, I've covered nearly every argument on the whole Godhead versus Trinity and modalism thing. So, you know, it's just something you have to spend some time to study and whatever. Um, Uh, Paul Lewis, hi Brian, greetings from Belgium. Catholics say they get the gift of becoming God. Thoughts, yeah, it says it in the in the catechism. It literally says, I don't have it here with me right now, back that way. Um, but it literally says about that that man might become God. Uh, that, that man made. I, I forget how they word it exactly, but yeah, they literally believe that they can become God, um, which is very. It's, it's good that they put that in the catechism because if you have a Catholic that's open to the truth, you can just show them, you know, Genesis there in the book of Genesis where it says, you know, Satan is speaking to Eve and he says you can become as God's knowing good and evil. And why does your catechism say the same thing? Basically, it's blasphemy. So. Uh, uh, See, so you are oneness. Uh, no, I'm not oneness. Um. Dr. Martin, KJV, question, if a Baptist church endorses Rick Warren's 40 days of prayer, um, well, I wouldn't go to it at all. I mean, if, if anybody's endorsing Rick Warren's 40 days of um, prayer or whatever else, I'd get away from it. Um, is Eric John Phelps saved? No idea. 
Uh, what is the Godhead? The Godhead is uh, one God composed of three different parts, a body, a soul, and a spirit. Jesus is the body, the Father is the soul, and the Holy Ghost is the spirit. Again, I've got a lot of studies on that going through all the scriptures, so I'm not going to get into all that stuff here, but um, yeah. Um, I believe that Father is greater than Jesus, though. Well, yeah, the soul is greater than the body. Uh, I have a soul within me, and it's better than my body of flesh, right? Jesus was not trying to say that he's this, a lesser being or something like that. Um, he is God. Uh, but his flesh was corruptible while he was here on the earth. He felt pain when he died on the cross. That's all he meant by that. But Jesus has the preeminence in heaven. Remember that. He's king of kings and lord of lords. By him all things consist. So, again, we've gone through that in the study. So, yeah, I'll, I'll try to remember to pray at the end of the live stream. I forget to do that sometimes. Um, uh, Nina, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do that. Well, oneness, what does oneness teach against the Godhead thing? Um, it just gets kind of confusing because they try to, you know, there is separation between Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's there. It's not Jesus morphing into different things. And they kind of get a little bit of that confused. They they don't they don't make it that the body and the spirit and the soul can be separated. So when you get to heaven and Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, they're saying, well, it's just kind of he's morphing or something. No, it's the Father and the Son are separate. Okay. Um, the Bible says right now that as a Christian, you're seated in, together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The book of Ephesians talks about that. How does that all work? I don't know. But with, the, with God, the body, soul, and spirit can separate and do separate things. And that's the mystery of godliness that we can't quite understand that with our, our current ability to think. We can't get that. Well, modalist just simply tries to mush it and say, well, it's just Jesus with um, three manifestations that he can. There's no actual separation there. And that's what I disagree with on the whole modalism thing. And a lot of oneness modalist type of stuff just kind of gets blended together. And I'm realizing I'm seeing, you know, some oneness people saying, no, we actually understand the difference between Father and Son and Holy Ghost, but we're saying that they are one God and and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, you know. So, um, okay. Let's see if there's any other comments or uh, yeah, comments, questions here. Yeah, the, the Nina Lopez there. I don't mean to throw off subject, but maybe sometime in the future we can talk about when Jesus was bleeding water and blood. Um, first John chapter five, verse eight, somebody had asked a question in another live stream I did. I wrote the thing down and I just haven't been able to get to it. Um, I am planning a study on that at some point in time, the thing of the water and the blood. Uh, Mike Roseberry, how do you feel about quote unquote black churches and praise breaks? I have no idea. I've never even heard of that. I, I, and I don't know. Are you referring to, to African American type people, black churches, or, or are we talking about an actual church that's painted black? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I'm, I'm completely ignorant on that subject. Um, uh, salvation of faith is it already possible to order a Bible at your ministry a question from the family no it's not at this point in time I don't have that as a you know eventually in the future we're looking forward to doing that you know Lord willing uh, but not right now yeah 982 Brian have you noticed that Ed refused to confess Jesus it is come in the flesh yeah I know yeah I, I checked up on that because I thought I'm, I'm interested to see what he has to do with, with that, the Melchizedek, Melchizedek thing, and um, and see if he would actually confess that Jesus is coming in the flesh. And he won't do it. He's got a spirit of Antichrist. Absolutely. Um,
What do you think CERN is really up to? I don't know. I did video on the whole. I don't believe in the Mandela effect thing, changing the Bible and all that other stuff. A lot of this modern day science, the Bible calls oppositions of science falsely so called. They're blending ancient occultism with modern scientific type of things. I don't really get into that whole deal there. I don't know. It, it has future fulfillment in the time of Jacob's trouble, I'm sure. Um, Dan Rand, can you do a subject on the Flint water situation? I don't know anything about that. Um, Flint water situation. Uh, you have to elaborate on that. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Um, test, test, Brian. When we get to heaven, do you think that we will still be able to recognize our family members from here on earth and also the 1,000 year reign on the new earth? Yes, I do. Um, I heard a guy actually say, it's kind of funny the one time he said, uh, will we have more sense or less sense in heaven than we do here? <laughs> we'll have more sense. Well, if you recognize your family members here and you have less sense than you will in heaven, well, then I think you'll recognize them up there. You'll understand things better. Um, <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9, um, reading down through here. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but then what? When... Excuse me, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Our understanding here. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. We'll have the mind of Christ when we get to heaven. So recognizing family members, not a problem. It absolutely will be easy. We're not going to look the same. I do believe we'll, we'll be receiving our incorruptible bodies. We'll be conformed to the image of Christ. How does that all work? I don't know. But we will, of course, understand things on a much higher level. Okay, Mike Roseberry. No African-American churches shouting where they might play some dance music and do a dance of some sort praising God. Yeah, I'm not really into that type of thing. I don't think it's right when you lose control of yourself and you're shouting and acting nuts and everything. Excuse me. Um, Dan Rand, question, Brian, do you think they're using lasers to shoot at the firmament trying to flood the earth like you see in music videos and in Hollywood movies? The whole, um, uh, the, uh, what do they call that? Um, uh, the military ray weapons or whatever else uh, i can't think of the name of that thing i don't know um the lord is allowing evil things to happen um and evil people to do things because people are wicked and you know god allowed nebuchadnezzar to come in and take over uh you know israel at one point in time because the jews were wicked and they turned on the lord um Thomas, what are your thoughts on the title of the gospel according to Luke as according as opposed to the gospel according to St. Luke? What do you think of the inclusion of saint in the title of the gospels? Well, they are saints, but I understand there's kind of a Catholic undertone there, you know, whatever. Um, pray to the saints and, and things like that. So, yeah, it's something I wouldn't fight about. Um, Roxanne Martinez, good morning, Brother Brian. Good morning. How are Sister Catherine and Oliver doing? Um, have missed seeing them and your family cooking videos truly are a blessing. Um, they're fine. They're doing good. Uh, we have uh, right now we're we're uh, just up here for a few hours and we'll be heading back home to our property and um, getting some things done down there and and uh, but we'll be getting back to doing some cooking videos and some family stuff at some point in time in the future. So. Uh, Dan Rand, my wife and I discovered you about a month ago and we can't get enough. We literally spent the first two weeks every day watching your videos. I know you're doing the Lord's work. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so I really do appreciate that. Um, uh, 982, sorry, I, I haven't been able to support your ministry. Been struggling lately. We've had no work this week. Things are tough at the moment. Yeah, 
I understand that. And, you know, I don't, I don't uh, push people away because they don't support us financially or something like that. I understand there are people that are blessed by the ministry, but they can't, you know, they don't have the ability to support us and whatever else. God will take care of us. And he always has. Um, but I do appreciate that thought there. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, Matt M. Question. Can a wicked person just say, I confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, or does the Holy Spirit prevent this? Good question. Um, if they understand the the context of it, I don't think that they can, I don't think it can come out of their mouth. They'll, they'll twist it a little bit. They, they might be able to just um, try to read it or whatever else, but they won't acknowledge, you know, like what I was talking about, that Jesus Christ was there in the Old Testament. Um, they can't say that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh as, you know, past tense, and yet it's present tense as well. So I would say that, no, they wouldn't be able to say it. And in, in, with an understanding of it. Um, uh, uh, um, let the church live loud, my brother. I was so sorry to hear about your beloved puppy dog. Do you feel that our beloved pets will be in heaven with us? Um, honestly, no, I don't. Um, there are certain things we can enjoy here on the earth, but heaven is a, uh, I know Peter Ruckman used to say, it's a prepared place for a prepared people. Well, that's true. Um, heaven is about worshiping Jesus Christ. It's not about getting what we loved here on earth in heaven for all of eternity. So, you know, there's neat things that we can experience here on the earth, but it's not going to be there in heaven. It's about Jesus Christ. Uh, one is Christian. Hey, brother, please repent of your heresy. You say Jesus is only a human body. A body doesn't pray. You need a spirit to pray. Um, well, I don't know how you're getting that. Uh, uh, Jesus is God, holy and completely God. He wasn't walking around without a spirit or a soul. So I don't teach that Jesus is just the body. He is the, in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, you know? So, uh, yeah, to answer you there. Um, Jack Maloof, the chocolate fudge is amazing. Made it yesterday. Thanks for the recipe. Yeah, it's, that's incredible. I, you know, I, I, I had this weird relationship with chocolate for many, many years where I love to eat chocolate, but I'd always get a headache if I, if I eat store-bought chocolate. And it just kind of grieved me because I love the taste of chocolate, but I just, I get a headache that lasts for, you know, 12 or more hours as a result of eating it. And so it was really kind of a, a very good blessing to be able to, <laughs> um, you know, be able to have that chocolate fudge recipe because it's really good and you feel good after you eat it. So pretty neat. Um, okay, I kind of missed a whole bunch of things here. Uh, Danny H. Brian, is it possible for a Christian to become demon possessed? First Corinthians. I know First Corinthians five five says, "Hand this man over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh." No, I don't believe that a, a Christian can be possessed with a devil. I, I don't believe that um, they can be oppressed or they, you know, harassed or whatever else, but they can't be possessed. Roger Pinch, do you still have a PO box? Yes, I do. PO box three three five, Bridgewater, Maine, zero four seven three five, is the address. Um, still working on the new ministry. You know, trying to relocate down that way, but we're just focusing on building things at our property right now. Um. Um, Dan Rand, you read straight from the Bible, can't argue with that or with what you teach. I love that. My mother told me before she died, a true pastor reads the Bible chapter by chapter, verse by verse, your thoughts. Yeah, you know, real preachers will, will be holding the Bible in their hands and they'll tell you to turn to the Bible. That's something I've, I've noticed over the years. And it's just dangerous when you read or when you see some guy and he's not actually telling you to turn in the Bible. I've always been wary of that, and I've always tried to make sure that I'm telling people to read 
in their Bible, turn in their Bible, let them know where I'm turning and, you know, make it about the Bible. Okay. The Bible is your standard. Uh, Votto says here, question, this came to my mind cause of the other question. What's meant in the title page of Revelation of, by St. John the Divine when he obviously wasn't divine? I don't get that one. Yeah, you know, you get some of the high church language and stuff in there and the reverend, the most reverend type of thing that they would say about people. I'm not saying that that's in the Bible, but I'm, you know, that I, Paul was not called Reverend Paul or something. But these titles that, you know, high church Anglicans were giving to people and whatever else and i would say saint john the divine yeah i think john would actually be a little bit offended at that um uh christian 94 19 question should i openly rebuke my co-workers when they blaspheme jesus or just ignore it because they do it so much um you can you can you know rebuke them i think it'd be a good idea if the lord you know you're going to feel that thing from the Lord. The Lord's just going to kind of just your soul is going to be vexed. And you're just going to say, hey, you know, um, could you please stop saying that? All right. Jesus is my savior. I really don't like to hear him, you know, uh, being blasphemed. Uh, or you can you can try witnessing to him. Just, you know, hey, the Lord you know, said this and things. Well, I don't want to hear about that. Well, you say his name, you know. So there's different ways to handle that. Um, Um, okay, I'm just kind of trying to go down through here. Uh, Earl Calloway, what causes anger to the point you cannot control it? Then 13 year combat veteran with uh, post traumatic st stress disorder. Um, well, there's you know, anger is, is a result of stress. And if you have a lot of stress in your life, um, you, you're going to get angry, you know, a lot more, you know, uh, you're going to boil over a lot if the if there's a lot of stress in your life. Um, you know, combat veterans, you know, that that really have been through a lot of stuff. I, I, I have sympathy for soldiers like that. Um, it just it's something that you, you need to just. I talk about getting out in nature a lot, but it's it is something that's a very very strong cure and to just calm down, go out, go fishing, go for a hike in the woods, whatever else. Hear the birds sing, breathe the, the fresh air. Very very important. Um, and a lot of a lot of I remember reading about the gunnery sergeant Carlos Hathcock that was a sniper in Vietnam, and he had this little room in his house that he'd go in there with all of his war mementos and trophies and medals and whatever else and he just sitting there in that room and you know his wife finally said you know you, you need to get out of there or i'm gonna leave you and you know snapped him out of this this you know being in that world um that world's going to be part of you if you're a soldier if you've been through war you've been through combat it's going to be there but you just you have to do things to get your mind on better issues because if you don't you're just going to be you know yelling and hollering at people and things like that. I can understand that. Um, you know, it's, it, I haven't, I don't have post-traumatic stress disorder, but I can understand some things about a soldier going through war because of some of the stuff I've been through in ministry. <laughs> and, um, you just, you can't dwell on those things. You have to just, you know, uh, I go down to my property and, and I see my little boy running through the woods and playing and the birds and everything else. And, and I just, I focus on that and I just, I thank the Lord and I say, thank you for this time right now. And what about all the bad things that people did to you in the past? What about all the bad stuff people said about you? Well, you know, there's that's there. And I went through that time and it was a hard time and whatever else, but it's over right now. Here's where I am right now. Here's what God's doing in my life right now. Uh Okay. Trying to get back to the comments here. I don't know if I missed anybody's questions. Hmm. 
Okay. Uh, Rob Sima Rooley, KGB only here in Northern Illinois is hard to find. Uh, is Independent Baptist usually safe? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh, Independent Fundamental Baptists are some of the most corrupt people out there, unfortunately. And I, it took me a very, very long time to, you know, come to that realization. Um, but there's so much stuff in within the IFB system that's bad. I mean, really, really bad. And I've been part of it. I've preached in the pulpits. You know, I've visited with the pastors. I've known a lot of different, you know, independent fundamental Baptists. There's a lot of cover up. There's a lot of perversion that goes on. And it's just kind of, all, you know, let's not talk about it. You know, yeah. Um, uh, Question, if you've already answered this one, I apologize. Would you consider doing a podcast with JT, Jake, and Tim about the Jesuits? I've kind of have covered the Jesuits and things, so I'm not really going to do a whole lot more on, you know, who the Jesuits are, what they're doing, whatever else. Um, where should you go in terms of uh, fellowshipping with people? Well, um, you know, start out with fellowshipping with people on – line and uh, maybe start meeting with people. The idea of the New Testament church is to get people saved and then you go and you counsel those people. You go from house to house and teach them the word of God, in other words. And then you build up churches that way. Uh, churches are groups of people and it doesn't matter where you meet. And you say, well, then you can meet in a church building. Well, you go to a church building and then you're going to get all the, the trappings of Roman Catholicism, which were they were the ones that created the whole church building concept. It's not the same as the Jewish synagogue. You gotta understand that. And you get into this whole thing of you wear your special uniform to, to church and you go to church to do certain things and whatever else. Um, it's a problem. That's why I say stay away from church buildings because then you separate your life as a Christian from your time in church. That's why I'm against church buildings. You know, if if a bunch of Christians, if there's some war, war, World War Three hits America and everything's getting blown to pieces and whatever else, and the only building in town is a church building that's left there, and a bunch of Christians want to get inside there and talk about what they're going to do, well, that doesn't matter. Church building is not has no. Well, it's got some issues, but you know, the the building is not the thing. It's the, what is done with that building. All the stuff that goes along with church buildings and that whole organized religion thing. That's why I stay away from church buildings. So. Uh, Okay. Um, Shepherd 777, my past experience in the Baptist community is you are pressured to go street preaching. I could not even preach to my hard, hardcore Catholic relatives. That's why I shy off from that. Um, again, I'm not against the thing of street preaching, um, but street preaching is filled with a lot of pride. And um, I've seen that. There are some good street preachers out there good street preaching ministries but you're going out there you're looking for trouble you're trying to get people riled up and angry at you and, and things like this it's a it's kind of a adrenaline thing and pride big time so and you get into this whole thing you know of oh do you street preach oh do you soul win when's the last time you personally let a soul to jesus you know where's this stuff at in the new testament where are people bragging about the work that they're doing for the Lord? It's not there. Um, bit uh, heaven in Zrain. 
uh, question. I have people telling me that I, that we are in the middle of Daniel's 70th week. Or already are we? If so, please explain. No, we're not. We're not in Daniel's 70th week yet. Um, not at all. Um, the the Daniel's 70th week doesn't start until the covenant is confirmed and i believe that covenant will be between the jewish people and the roman catholic church not between the jews and, and islam that's nonsense the bible doesn't teach that um yeah our dutch bibles are corrupt for example isaiah 14 12 morning star um whoops um the kgb says lucifer this translation is correct yeah i think the heilige schrift of, of luther is the same way he says morning star. Okay, Earl Calloway, why do Christians not talk about flat earth when the word uh, says over 100 verses about flat earth? Well, you know, there's there's debate on that whole thing. Um, you know, it's just something that I've not get into. You know, I, I know that there's a lot of, uh, attacking and whatever else that goes on with you know you go flat earth people attack you on that or whatever else and i just don't have time to study all these different things i i, I don't ever want to set myself up as some kind of a know-it-all expert that knows everything about the bible that's never been my intention and so you know i have to pick the fights that i'm going to be in i fight for the bible version issue i fight for the rapture being before the time of jacob's trouble or the catching up being before the time of Jacob's trouble, I'll fight very hard on that one. Um, I fight against the Trinity thing. I fight against, you know, uh, easy believism, lordship, salvation, a couple other things. But flat earth is just something I can't get into. Um, uh, no, the morning star in Isaiah does not mean Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, no, it, no, it does not. He's not ever been on the, you know, uh, mountain of God, and he's not trying to be God and whatever else. So, no. And there's a lot of other things I could say about that. Um, any tips on witnessing to LGBT people? Uh, yeah, they're they're uh, they're in sex perversion, they're in sin, and um, I've talked to uh, former sodomites, and it is a very very horrible lifestyle. Um, there's no real love there and it's very it's a very dark world um, that they're in and um, you know he witnessed them like like any old sinner God loved them enough to send his son to die on the cross to pay for their sins and uh, you know the Lord will save them Okay. Does Chick Track still have the gay blade tract? I have no idea. I really don't. And by the way, at 982, there are most LGBT have high suicide rates. Yeah. Um, let me just let me say another thing about the LGBT thing. A lot of the LGBT thing is there because Dan Ran, you talk about love how your wife dresses like a true woman of God. Um, gender confusion is what leads to a lot of this LGBT thing. Um, there are some very dear young women out there that are being told to dress like a guy. They put on pants, they cut their hair short, and and they feel ugly, and no guys give them attention, and so they think, well, maybe I'm gay, you know, and then they go out and they get involved in that lifestyle, and then it just is, they start to destroy and attack their flesh. Um, it's It's sad. It really is sad. Um, and young men uh, are starting now to kind of that's starting to get into the young men's minds now, too. Maybe you're uh, gay because you're not you don't have a girlfriend or something like this. Um, if people would just look, you know, if you're a, if you're a guy, look like a man. If you're a girl, look like a lady. OK, distinction, separation. Um, God is a God of diversity. He wants people to be. He creates you to be unique. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, he wants you to to experience everything that he's made you to be. And, you know, the, that's why you come to him and you you tell him about their sin and things like that. And, and God, you know, 
he will save you, you know, and he'll give you a new life. So, hi, Ada, sister Ada. See there, your comment. Um, lust is sin, fornication or foreplay before marriage is sin. Um, well, fornication before marriage, yeah, definitely a sin. Foreplay, um, if you're not going into full-on fornication, it's still sin because you're basically playing with fire. Um, but, you know, if you're, you know, any kind of sexual contact, then, yeah, that's sin. Um, kissing and hugging and things like that. I'm not going to be so strict that, you, that I would say that you can't, you know, I don't think the Bible teaches that you can't kiss before you get married. but you start to play around with that stuff, you know, it's it's dangerous. Um, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. The Bible talks about. So you, you you're you're messing around, and you shouldn't be doing that. Um, I'm not saying you, but I'm saying somebody that's lusting and things like that before marriage. Um. Shepherd 777, what do you recommend What Dwells Beyond by Jeffrey Martis book? No idea. Never heard of it. Yeah, Brother Matthew there. Uh, the LGBT movement is just another attempt for men and women to willingly castrate uh, and sterilize themselves. Yeah, it is. It's part of the eugenics movement, and a lot of people don't understand that. And I'll, I'll tell you something else, too, about the sodomy movement. Um, deep down, a lot of uh, red-blooded men hate sodomites and there's going to come you know, remember when the antichrist comes the bible says he goes forth conquering and to conquer who's he conquering there's going to be war there's going to be wars on certain groups of people what are the groups well first of all i believe it's going to be islam secondly i'm going to believe i believe it's going to be sodomites and non-catholics and things also will be a third group you know but uh, sodomy is not going to be something that's going to be looked upon. That's why you have the new IFB. That's basically they're going to be part of the Antichrist church system. And they say, when we get a righteous government, we're going to put sodomites to death. They're telling the future. That's what they're going to do. They hate sodomites. So all this movement of all this sodomy stuff coming up, it's going to be brought up to be smashed down, and they're going to kill them right and left. Uh, when you have soldiers... They're going to go in there and they're just going to slaughter the, the sodomites. Um, let me see where I'm at here. Uh, question, Votto here. Um, uh, what's the best book or source on the Albigenses? I have no idea. I really don't on that one. Sorry, I can't answer that. Um Yeah, Dan ran there. Thank you about, for exposing the Amish. Yeah, not a problem. They're they're frauds. They're just the total totally fake. Um, Long haired cross. Local church Bible publishers or church Bible publishers for KJV. Either one. I I never got into the whole whatever that argument was there. You know. I don't know, um, but I would I'd buy from either one. Yeah, I'm glad we won't be here either when the Antichrist shows up. Um, DBM TV. Hey, Brian, what are your thoughts on the date KGV Bible? Somebody sent me one a, a while back, and I just I haven't had a time to go through it. That, uh, Dake Bible, and then there's there's a couple other study Bibles that people sent to me, and, and it's one of those deals. Could you please do a review? Well, it's in storage right now. Um, that'll be something for the future. Well, praise the Lord. Glad to hear that the videos are helped to you. Um, um, 
your thoughts on medical marijuana it's the only drug or plant god made uh well uh I, i'm not a big fan of the whole um oh good glad to hear you got the bibles sister ada um i'm not a big fan of the whole medical marijuana thing my dad was in um, ambulance work and he talked about how people on marijuana were um pretty messed up drug wise and things um I think it's dangerous to mess with marijuana and you know the the heroin is come from the poppy plant so you could say well that's natural as well you know and cocaine comes from the coca leaf so uh there's a lot of drugs that are that are natural and you know i would say actually that a lot of the pharmaceutical drugs out there are worse than those drugs but you shouldn't be taking any of that stuff um christian 9419 question are the chemtrails bad in maine yes uh, here in Ohio, they are nonstop crazy bad lately. Yeah, I just I got video just literally the other day of uh, them chem trailing down on our property. It was insane. I mean, doing the X's, you know, and I have a camera and I can I zoomed in really good and you could actually see it coming out the back of the plane. It's not even coming out where the motors are. You know, up underneath the wings, you have the the two big jet motors. It was coming out the back of the plane. You know, old condensation. It is not condensation. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Um, yeah, the, the geoengineering thing gets me really ticked off, to be honest. I've done videos on it, and I was and seeing these weird things too, where you see it, uh, the, like the chemtrail, and then it's like this dark thing underneath it. It's, it's really weird. Uh, years ago, I actually saw a black chemtrail. Um, messed up stuff. But yeah, they're, they, you know, the other day it was bright and blue and sunny and, and you know, just all the planes of flying over top and everything else. Uh, you know, I, I love blue skies. I love sunshine. I like to get work done outside and it just irritates me so much. And I pray against them and things to say, Lord, you know, just ruin that guy's day or, you know, just, yeah. Uh, beyond the Reformation, why won't you debate Pastor Brian McClurg on the Trinity? Just wondering. He's not a pastor, okay? The guy looks like he's a drug addict. Um, what on earth? And and uh, Brian McClurg is a lying, he's a devil. I mean, my word. I, I don't waste my time on a guy like that. And not to mention the fact that there's no, you know, debate is, is a sin, according to Romans chapter 1. So, Thoughts on Marcus Rogers? Never watched any of his videos, honestly. Don't really know anything about him. Yeah, I thought Trump was going to stop the chemtrails. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. Laughing out loud there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Trump was going to stop a lot of things. Um, you know, uh, people fall for Trump's lies because they they really think that. You know, there's a there's a part of you there that wants to believe that there's a good politician and that things could actually get better. You know, and I've done some of that in the past, you know, and, and you hear some guy that's a politician. They tell you what you want to hear and that we're going to bring back America. We're going to make America great again and everything. And you think it might actually get better. People read. It doesn't get better. It's it worse. OK. So, um, so, uh, for by grace ye are saved, 777. Brian Dellinger, do you believe in works for salvation or do you believe in the finished? cross work of Jesus Christ what is your belief um, works will not save you um, not at all uh, Jesus Christ paid it all on the cross and uh, where people get confused is they think that they can make an intellectual assent to the facts of scripture and that that saves them uh, you're saved when the Holy Spirit um, first comes in and convicts you of your sin and then you realize there's no way I'm gonna make this there's no way I can be good enough I've done too many bad things if God judges me for what I've done in my past for what I've even done recently then I'm gonna to go to hell 
and then you hear that Jesus Christ died to pay for your sins and you put your faith in that, you believe what the Bible says, and then you say, God, please, will you please save me? Call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. And, you know, works will come after that. Lord will change your life and then you'll start doing works meet for repentance. The Bible talks about. There was a whole lot of stuff came up there as I was talking. So I'll just kind of go back up here. What happens to your soul and spirit when you die? I go. They, I believe they go to be with the Lord. Um, Luke 14, 26. Charles B. there. Luke 14, 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Um, you know, as far as it's hate, in other words, um, you would rather see them go to, you know, if, if you have to choose between your, your family and the Lord and you get saved and realize, OK, they're going to go to hell. Well, then that's the way it has to be. It's not that you hate them in the sense of you want to kill them or something like that. That's not what's being said there. Um Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, busy here says, uh, can Brian, can you comment on the 1611 versus 1769? Um, I did a whole video on that. Um, basically, the English language was not really um, finished. It was it was still somewhat young in sixteen, you know, in the seventeenth century. There, um, it was still it was kind of at its its peak. But a lot of the spelling of words was not finalized, and you had the old the a lot of the U's actually looked like V's, and a lot of the S's looked like an F in the Gothic font. And so the sixteen eleven, there's spelling differences from that to the modern 1769 that we have right now. Um, there were some, you know, when the, the original typeset uh, um, there for the 1611, it had to, they were all little wooden letters that carved little wooden letters and they had to put them in the, the little press thing there. Um, they had to put them in backwards, I think it was. And, you know, upside down and backwards or something like that when they would press the thing. I mean, it would have been really difficult to get everything spelled just perfectly. So with any great text, you're going to have, um, you know, some spelling issues and whatever else and you proofread and, oh, we have to change this here. We have to change that there. Well, they did that by proofreading and correcting some of the spelling errors or whatever, grammatical errors. But then the English language itself was changing at that time. So they, they were also spelling words differently. They were, they were changing some other things, but there was no doctrinal changes of any kind made between 1611 and 1769. Um, and a lot of the changes were actually done by the translators themselves. I forget which one it was, Lancelot Andrews or one of them. And he was alive for a lot of those um, changes that were made up in through the 1600s. So, um, Okay. What did I miss? Yeah, Brian, Brian McClure. Don't even talk to me about that guy. My word. He's a loser. Ordained by Ruckman, yeah, whatever. So, 
927. Numerology in the Bible. Um, there's numerology is an occult art, but there are numbers, a series of numbers in the Bible. Um, Satan will counterfeit anything uh, that God does. Best way I can say it. So. Good work, Otto. Max Bauer changed his channel name. Oh, really? What is it now? I, mean, I didn't know that. Um, any thoughts on Steve Quayle? Uh, yeah, I'd wait. I'd watch out for that guy. He's got some weird things. He's a post tripper so I, I used to hear a little bit of his stuff, and he gets into the uh, giants that are alive today and whatever else, and Nephilim or whatever. Uh, I don't waste time on the guy. Um, what was the next one there? Stay away from the Schofield notes. Or are they okay? Uh, you know, in terms of that type of thing. There's there's some things um, that you can learn from Schofield, but it's it's like anything else. You just have to go back to the text of the King James Bible as your final authority. Is God a form of energy and not of human image? Uh, he is a soul, uh, and Jesus Christ is God, so he has a image. You know, the image of, of the Godhead is Jesus Christ and him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So um, there are souls in heaven in, in Revelation chapter six that they can be seen and white robes are given to them. So, again, that's stuff that we're not going to understand until we get up to be with the Lord in heaven. Um, but I believe that 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 there will be separation between the soul and the body when we get there to heaven. And. Because there's there's prophecies that need to be completed. You know, he's seated at the right hand of God until his enemies are made his footstool. Essentially, paraphrasing there a little bit, but um, Joe says, "Is it possible that when we are saved and receive the Holy Ghost in us, that our spirit goes to sit with Christ? Could it be? Could that be how we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus? Very possible. I'm not sure." Again, how that works. Um, Brian Bailey, question: Are you familiar with familiar with the Behold Israel channel? No, I'm not. Um, yeah. Question from Vado here, Brian. If you want to talk. To me about it via email I could send you a very interesting Bible uh, problem right now is going to be brother that's going to be hard for me to get to it because things are really be you know really busy DWPD 1963 thank you so much for your videos brother I am helped so much by them praise the Lord I really do appreciate that um, Tundra M what is the difference between heaven and paradise well I believe that heaven is up and paradise was down in the heart of the earth. Um, but I mean, there's, I know what you're saying. There's some things there that you could make arguments you could make and things. It's one of those big studies. <laughs> uh, do you folks recommend 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 material to people, even though he was for church buildings in the word? And use the word Trinity to explain the Godhead. Um, you know, the, the bridal talking guy, old brother. Uh, it's all busy. He's comment there. Um, Peter Ruckman, there's a, there's a bunch of issues I'm learning with him as time goes by. And there, I have some questions about Ruckman. And uh, there's a lot of things that they said. I just got the Bible Believers bulletin here, the most recent one. They sent it to me. And. And, you know, there was some stuff in there. I'm just thinking, ugh, 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 boy, this is so wrong, you know. And and yet there's there's good stuff. 
and that's how it is with the brethren you know who do i recommend listening to well listen to, to male preachers that preach out of the king james bible and the holy spirit's going to take you through there and you're going to learn some good stuff from them and you're going to learn heresy you're going to hear heresy i should say well learn too i guess and you just got to get through it you got to get through that whole thing i'm not going to just say only listen to Brian Dunning or nobody else. No, you, you need to listen to, to men that preach out of the King James Bible. I mean, some guys preaching out of a new version, you just go, no, sorry. <laughs> Holy Spirit's not showing you anything out of that book. Um, no, you know, it's, but a man preaching out of the King James Bible, listen to him, um, give him a chance. And, you know, I've learned some great things from, from men, you know, like uh, J. Frank Norris, you know, an old preacher from the early 20th century. Uh, and yet he had the biggest Baptist churches in, you know, I think before Jack Hiles. I think Jack Hiles might have, you know, done more than him or whatever else. But, you know, I've, I've learned some great things from some of those guys. Uh, Lester Roloff, I've been a, uh, I've learned some great stuff from him. He was a radical vegetarian, though, which I have a big problem with that. Um, but, you know, just just read, you know, Ruckman stuff, listen to him and things, but he's not God. I have right here the, you know, the Ruckman Reference Bible, and there's some good stuff in here. And there's some other things that it just, you think, what? You know, I mean, he literally says in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 3, um, that, you know, I'll just read this just to, to prove my point here. Um Hebrews chapter 7, verse 3, uh, he says, um, at the end he says, So with that I check out and give my standard reply in such matters, ich weiß nicht. Uh, you know, and he says, you know, I don't know, basically. it's it, it, I don't know if it's it's Jesus or I'm not really sure who Melchizedek is. I'm thinking uh, it's Jesus. Read Hebrews chapter 6, verse 20. Four verses earlier, it's Jesus. You know, so... Ruckman's a great blessing, but he's not perfect. Uh, Lester Roloff, Oliver B. Green. You know, there's there's a lot of good guys out there. You can listen to them. You can learn things from them, but they're not perfect. So, uh, um, I missed a lot of things there. Um, I was talking. I saw the comments going up and up and up. So, uh, what does the Bible say about birthdays? Uh, it doesn't really say anything. Um, I'll give you a scripture on that. Romans chapter 14, standard reply to the thing of holidays and birthdays. Because a lot of people say, well, birthdays are pagan and you, know, you can't celebrate a birthday and whatever else. Um, Uh, Romans, or, yeah, Romans chapter 14, verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Simple. Um, have you ever heard of a man named G. Craig Lewis? No, I haven't. Yeah, don't listen to Steve Anderson, though. Uh, very true. <laughs> um, oh, boy. Answer every every uh, argument against, you know, an argument about to defend the Godhead versus Trinitarians. I am going to be doing something, you know, a really exhaustive study on the whole issue of Godhead versus Trinity in the future. Um, so... Yeah, I, I, I have some things planned on that, but uh, yeah.
you know. Um, yeah, some of his, his graduates, you know, some of the graduates of PVI that I run into, some of them have their own mind. They come out, you know, understanding, you know, Brother Ruckman loved the Lord. He did his best in his own way, but he's not the authority. But then there's some that just come out and just, if Ruckman said it, that's what I'm going to preach. Ruckman, Ruckman, Ruckman. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a problem. Um, okay. Yeah, as far as the whole Sabbath day thing there, Angel Flynn, um, I have a study on that, um, on the thing of, you know, uh, you know, um, the, the the Sabbath day was given as a sign of the nation of Israel. And so you got to be real careful about that. Um, you know, the, the whole Sunday law thing in the, in the first century, they were actually meeting on the first day of the week, which was, you know, Sunday. And so, um, as a Christian, you can meet at any time, any day of the week. And the, the Sabbath, Sabbath day being, holy and sanctified and things like that. It's for the Jewish people. Um, so. So anyhow. Ruckman calling him rowdy, yeah. He's he's something else. Um uh, question, why do people say that Sunday law is the mark of the beast? I think it's along the lines of the RFID microchip. I know Seventh day Adventists push that. Um was it Mary Baker Eddy, I think her name was, or I think that's what her name was, the founder of the whole Seventh day Adventist cult. Uh, she was a nut, that woman. Um, I found out some stuff about her, too. You know, one of her protégés, uh, actually, his name was Kellogg. Kellogg's cornflakes, you know, came from his weird, bizarre beliefs. I mean, it just, he was a radical man. Um, they paid the, uh, wasn't Mary Baker Eddy, what was her name? The uh, woman that founded the Seventh-day Adventist thing. Oh, I cannot think of that woman's name right now. But yeah, there were some big problems with that. Um, it's not Sunday law is not all. Ellen G. White, thank you, Ellen G. White. Yeah, the uh, Ellen White family, the Whites there, they actually put this uh, Kellogg. I can't think of his first name right now, but they put him through medical school. So. Okay. Question, why is Pentecostalism membership so huge these days? Are they a cult or something? Yeah, Pentecostalism is, is nonsense. My great-grandfather was a Pentecostal preacher, and he was abusive in the whole thing. I mean, he was, he was not good. Um, Victoria, Victoria, Victorious, thanks so much. Thanks so much for studying the word so much, Brian. I learned a lot listening to you. You've got the right spirit. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, uh, for by grace, you are saved 777. You ever heard of a channel authorized KJV 1611? He got some good content. The person decided to do his last vid, though, to take a rest of YouTube. Good channel, though. Never heard of it. I don't think I've heard of it. Um, am I going to be exposing any more false teachers in the future? Not sure yet, as the Lord leads there. Um, yeah, a lot out of there.
Question, would it be accurate to say that Jesuit White, that White's a descendant of Ellen White to create the white supremacists? I don't know. Maybe. No, I'm just kidding. No, I don't I don't know if there's probably no connection between the two other than the name. Um Yeah, that Kellogg guy, you study the, the, the guy, cannot think of his first name, but he had this weird healing clinic thing, and, and um, Henry Ford would go there, and, and some of these other big, powerful elites, and um, they were into vegetarianism and meats. Too much meat is bad for you, and and he he had 40 children, but yet, yet never had sexual relations with his wife. I mean, the guy was a screwball. I mean, he was weird. Later on in life, he believed that it was the healthiest thing was for him, excuse me to have to say this, but was to walk around with a G-string on as an old man. The guy was a nut. And his younger brother was the one that made the Kellogg's Corn Flakes and because uh, they used to make them there and feed them to people at their health resort thing um, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, I think it was. And then his brother took that recipe and put sugar with it, which the older brother, the Dr. Kellogg, just flipped out about been studying that that's pretty interesting um so uh question can a seven-year-old child understand he is a sinner well they have a basic understanding but i don't think that they can understand that they are actually you know sinned against a holy righteous god and all the implications of salvation um yeah i, I you know i understand you know a lot of times children will try to say things that'll try to please mom and dad. So uh, it's it's dangerous to talk to young, uh, teach young children what to do. I mean, I'm going through with my son, telling him about the Lord. We read the Bible all the time. Uh, but, you know, when, when I hear somebody saying that they got saved at the age of seven or, you know, if they're get, saying that they got saved under the age of 10, eh, eh I don't know about that. Okay, we'll see you, Spencer. Um, so, well, I think I'm, see a lot of you are saying that you, know, you got to get going and things. I've been doing this now for a little while here. Not even sure. How much time this has been going on but should probably get going here soon um uh anthony agans there just say this as far as how to talk to your friend about catholics you know the older christians they just believe some things that are different uh, get a catechism just go out and buy a used catechism and show them some of the stuff that's in there you know especially like a baltimore catechism those things are really interesting um so uh david davy and james i believe in the trinity am i going to hell uh what do you believe about the trinity i used to say the word trinity if you believe in three different gods that call themselves uh you know this god the father god the son god the spirit and if you understand the issue and you reject the fact that jesus christ is you know that he is the father and the spirit in one being then you don't really understand who Jesus Christ is. And Jesus said in John 8, you know, if you believe not that I am he, speaking about the Father, ye shall die in your sins. You know, it's very dangerous to get into that Trinitarian stuff. You're believing in a God that is outside of Scripture. Um, so, um, Uh, busy ATS. Brian, I think it's really strange that a lot of comments speaking negatively of Stephen Anderson are held for review. Yeah, you know, I've I've seen this thing for years where I'll say stuff about Stephen Anderson or I'll do things against Stephen Anderson. And there's people with administrator, you know, abilities and things like that that they can get through. doesn't matter. They don't get my permission to go in and mess with comments. I've had people say, hey, why did you delete my comment? I never deleted their comments. And my wife doesn't even mess with YouTube comments so um people mess with my channel all the time at youtube you have to understand that youtube loves you uh steven anderson 
uh, he's here for a reason. I believe that, that Steven Anderson is hooked up to the military, very honestly. Um, you know, when I say military, I mean like a human or something like that. Uh, intelligence, military intelligence being used as a, you know, just being an idiot like he is and making Christians look bad as a result. Um, RGIG 062505, please pray for our family. We are getting a lot of grief from my mother-in-law for our stand on the scriptures. It's very hard for my husband as he is an only child. It is it is hard. I understand that, that you go through this time um, of, you know, your family turning against you and whatever else. And it, it's rough. I'm not going to say, oh, you just get through it. It's not that bad. It's very bad when your family that you love um, really starts to come down on you hard and whatever else. And you just have to make that decision. I'm going to follow Jesus Christ no matter what. So, yeah, I'll pray for you. Um, <clears throat> uh, what about Copernicus? He was a Jesuit Catholic priest and he created the heliocentric model when the Bible teaches a geocentric model for the earth. I believe, sorry if I spelled some wrong LOL. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. I haven't studied it, you know, to be very honest with you. Um, F reg top question. Are there any feasts in the Bible we should keep? Sorry if my English isn't that good. I'm from the Netherlands. It's just, I understand you just fine. Um, I don't see any, anything in the, in the scriptures for keeping any of the Jewish feasts, any Jewish feast days or anything like that. Um, again, Romans chapter 14 gets into the thing of, of, uh, you're to be fully persuaded in your own mind. It's not something that a Christian should argue over. If you have certain customs and traditions in your culture, um, you can do those if you want to. If you can honor the Lord through that somehow or whatever else. Um, if you, you know, but I don't see anything saying that, that Christians have to, to keep Jewish feast days. And when they meet together in Acts chapter 15, uh, the Jews meeting together there and they're saying, okay, what should we tell these Jews or these Gentiles to do? Um, it's just that they're to keep themselves from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. In other words, there's nothing about holidays or we should tell them to keep the Jewish feast days. That's not there. Um, what are my plans on the Greg Miller thing? Not going to do anything with it. Enough people said, you know, uh, don't waste your time on it. Yeah, I agree. Um, John Harvey Kellogg, I believe you're talking about. I think that's the name, yeah. Um, Okay. Well, I think that's pretty much it. So, our tongue still in effect? Well, yeah, sure, absolutely. I'm speaking English right now. That's a tongue. Okay, uh, final question there, Vado. Anything come, else come out yet? Either from Spitwad Lion, Andrew Stupid, or the Andrew Stupids. Uh, well, there's always going to be things coming out against that guy. Um, yeah, I just I wish Christians would just see the tr the danger that that guy is, and just see that he is being used to make us look like fools, and you know come out and just attack the guy and say, he's fake. He's a fraud. Steven Anderson is not like us. He's not one of us, you know, that's it. So, 
Okay, that's going to be it for this live stream thing. Um, nice talking to a lot of you, and uh, you know, we'll get to fellowship more when we get to heaven. You know, that's what eternity's for. We get to talk forever. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I wish that I know I've I've had different people say you know that my online presence isn't the greatest and whatever, and I'm kind of hard to contact and whatever else. You know, yeah. Um, understand that uh but you know i can only do so much i'm just one man so um but i guess that's going to be it and i'll we will close with a word of prayer here that was requested earlier so we'll pray here um dear heavenly father i do pray for all the people that are uh, friends of the ministry here lord i pray that uh, you would encourage them strengthen them keep them in your word Give them opportunities to witness and, and uh, just keep them strong, Lord. And I pray for the enemies of this ministry that have watched this, that uh, they would come to know you as their Savior and not be um, messing around with all this false doctrine and all these ministries, or not ministries, but all these other channels that hate this ministry. I just pray, Lord, that they would get through that and realize that they're accountable to you. And they can hate me all they want to, but they're accountable to you. And um, so I just pray, Lord, that uh, for those out there that are struggling with their lost relatives, I pray that you would strengthen them, help them to, to keep their stands. And um, I just really do pray, Lord, that uh, um, you would also be there for those that are struggling with sickness, that you would heal them and, and give them wisdom, Lord, how to, to be in better health. And uh, help us all to work hard for you and, and um, to not be weary in well-doing. And I ask it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. We will talk to everybody later. Some interesting videos coming up in the future. Um, so I'll say more in the future about different ideas and announcements and things. Uh, so that's going to be it. See you in the next video.